on May 4th, we will lift uh, restrictions on gyms, fitness centers, and indoor athletic facilities. We took every precaution possible. It still found us and it was still nasty. It still ripped our family to pieces. Uh, we're going to celebrate Toad Suck Days uh, as a community uh, like we always have, but maybe in a different format. It's not one hospital we're supporting, we're supporting the entire medical community. And it's not just the doctors and the nurses, it's, it's the entire staff. More announcements come every day from Governor Asa Hutchinson to slowly reopen the state of Arkansas. Thank you for joining us tonight at 10. I'm Amanda Yeager. Today, the governor continued to roll back restrictions, this time for gyms and fitness centers. These facilities can reopen on Monday, May 4th, but with some new stipulations. Staff and guests will have to be screened before entering, and people will need to be 12 feet apart while exercising. With those tricky rules in place, some facilities like the Hot Springs Family YMCA aren't sure how things will go. Who will come back in? How quickly will they come back in? Uh, we're getting ready to offer summer day camp. We're not sure whether or not families are going to feel confident enough to bring their kids in. The Hot Springs Y won't be ready on Monday. They're aiming for next Wednesday. And tonight, we want to know what you think. Go to THV11.com slash vote and weigh in on our live poll. Will you visit the gym on May 4th? Other businesses are also trying to figure out how to comply with the state's reopening rules. Yesterday, the governor announced Arkansas restaurants can reopen their dining rooms on May 11th, but only at one third of their capacity. Meanwhile, Park Plaza and McCain malls will both reopen tomorrow with limited hours. Mall employees will be tested for COVID-19 before returning to work and will be regularly sanitizing everything. They're also encouraging retailers to do the same in their stores and asking guests to take their temperatures before going to the mall. There are still some more announcements on tap from the governor. Tomorrow is the one that we know a lot of people are waiting for salons and barber shops. Then on Monday, the governor will tackle places of worship and other large venues. You can watch those announcements on the THV 11 app as well as the THV 11 YouTube page. Federal social distancing guidelines expire tonight at midnight, and some states are loosening restrictions while others are keeping them in place. CBS New correspondent Michael George reports from New York. Protesters, some of them armed, marched on Michigan State Capitol, demanding Governor Gretchen Whitmer lift extended stay-at-home orders. She just issued an order that says I can't go out to a drive-in movie inside my own vehicle with 20-foot space between their vehicles. California Governor Gavin Newsom ordered Orange County beaches temporarily closed after crowds flocked to them last weekend. Specific issues on some of those beaches have raised alarm bells. Uh, people that are congregating there that weren't practicing uh, physical distancing. By Friday, at least 35 states will have loosened their lockdowns, some allowing retailers with limits on customers, movie theaters, and restaurants to open with capacity restrictions. This Little Rock, Arkansas restaurant owner thinks it's still too soon. Doing curbside was one thing, but having people come to the, you know, the patio or the dining room, sit down and eat, and then us cleaning up after them, but that's a really different set of circumstances. Governor Cuomo ordered New York City subways to be shut down for four hours overnight for daily cleaning starting next week. The transit system has lost dozens of workers to the coronavirus and tragedy mixed with renewal. Raymond Sangster's mother died from COVID-19 just days before he was admitted to New York's Mount Sinai Hospital. But after several days on a ventilator, the 56-year-old coronavirus survivor went home to his wife and two children. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Good Thursday evening, Central Arkansas meteorologist Nathan Scott. And my job has been pretty easy today. It's been a beautiful day all around Arkansas, all thanks to area of high pressure keeping the skies clear. And we've got clear skies out there right now. The winds are going light to calm, and you can see the temperature difference where those winds have gone calm. The mercury has dropped down very quickly. It's 54 in Clinton, 56 in Russellville, 61 in Pine Bluff, and 58 in Monticello. Temperatures starting out your Thursday or Friday will see temperatures into the upper 40s to lower 50s. But then we rebound very quickly thanks to plenty of sun with some high clouds mixing in. But temperatures warmer 
and what we saw there today, highs topping onto the low to mid 80s. Rain chances were dry on Friday, small chance of rain on the weekend. I'll get more to that and let you know when our next real best chance of rain comes up a little bit later. We saw a smaller jump in COVID-19 cases today than we've seen recently. The Arkansas Department of Health reports 3,281 total cases of COVID-19, but less than 2,000 of those are active cases. More than 1,300 Arkansans have recovered from the virus. Unfortunately, 61 people have lost their lives. And one of those deaths was the matriarch of a family in Warren. The family's dream trip turned into their worst nightmare after their beloved mom and wife died from COVID-19. A son and husband recovering from the virus. Our Don Scott spoke with that family who says their hope is that people take this virus seriously. Fortunately, I fully recovered, but my family has irrevocably changed due to the illness. Rob Reap bravely reads an editorial he wrote for the Saline River Chronicle. My mother passed away from complications from the virus April 18th after a month plus long battle at St. Vincent Infirmary. His mother, 63 year old Beverly Reap. She was about as, as perfect as a person can come in my opinion. Reap, a beloved Bradley County teacher, mom and wife to the former mayor, Greg Reap. I think she's probably why I got elected several times. And I was always glad she didn't run against me because if she had of, she would have beat me. Greg is all smiles, thinking of so many wonderful memories. Yet his grief is more than he can bear at times. Rob, her only son, recalls her selflessness, sharing his mother's greatest legacy. She loved, she loved, excuse me, she loved everyone. <laughs> Maybe not everyone, but she, she did love. Beverly retired just a few years ago. She wanted to spend her years traveling and last year planned a dream trip, the trip of a lifetime, as her family called it, to Europe. She gave it as a gift to her son, his wife, and her husband, Greg. It was, it was uh, the, great, the greatest week with my family. It was a, followed by a month-long nightmare. The family was aware of coronavirus, but in late February and early March, the dates of their trip, it hadn't reached Arkansas. There were no travel bans in place, but after nearly canceling it, they took the advice of health professionals and their travel agent and decided to go anyway, a decision that haunts them to this day. I kind of blame myself, to be honest, that I, you know, let us do it. Uh, we were told the risk was very minute. We took every precaution possible. It still found us and it was still nasty and it still, it still, uh, it still ripped our family to pieces. Through the years, Beverly made a name for herself, hosting summer trips to Washington, D.C. She even managed to gain access to the White House when President Bill Clinton was in office. Many years as a history teacher meant countless students passed through her classroom. She never forgot even one of their names. Uh, her main thing was teaching school and being a mother. A mother who adored her only child, Rob. And while he and his father, Greg, have fully recovered from coronavirus, they did so while grieving their sweet Beverly, who did not recover. She was the greatest mom I could have ever hoped for. I catch myself thinking, well, really hadn't happened. Time's precious and you better take advantage of it because you just don't know. I want to caution my fellow citizens to not underestimate this virus. I've lived it. While my experience wasn't too severe, I paid a price far greater than I ever wanted to pay. I lost my mom. Rob Reap wrote that editorial as part of his grief process. You can read it in its entirety on THV11.com. And of course, our thoughts and our prayers are with the Reap family and every family grieving a death due to COVID-19. A fever is one of the main symptoms of COVID-19, and it's something you can test at your home. But the problem is there are dozens of thermometers and ways to use them. We had our Verify team look into the best practices to get the best results. Here's Jason Puckett. Search online and there are lots of thermometers you can buy. So which is best and how can you get the most accurate results? To find out, we asked Nisa Ernst. She's the nurse manager in endoscopy and biocontainment at John Hopkins Hospital. We have found um, is that this the temporal thermometers 
actually work the best. Temporal thermometers are a newer type that you place against your forehead to get a reading. It's that fast too. Yeah, it's that fast. And then you're simply wiping it down with an alcohol wipe and you can take the next employee that's coming in. So they're quick, easily cleaned, and Ernst says they're by far the most accurate. But they are more expensive and not as easy to find. So what about infrared or digital thermometers? They're all over online and in stores. Is that better than nothing? Absolutely. No question. And everybody should have a thermometer like this at home. Ernst says most modern thermometers are pretty accurate, but the infrared and digital ones are more likely to be affected by outside factors like the temperature of the room or sunlight. Still, any thermometer works as long as you test at the right time. Go out and get a basic thermometer and take your basic temperature before you're febrile. The CDC says for most, a fever is temperatures above 100.4 degrees, but some people run hot or cold. So if you test before you have a fever, you can compare that number when you are feeling sick. Even if you're above or below the average, you'll know if the temperature is high for you. So now you've got a thermometer. Where should you test on your body? Ernst says rectal tests are the most accurate, but most people won't do that. Next would be an oral test, and she said ear thermometers are off and off by a few degrees. So bottom line, Ernst highly recommended temporal thermometers, especially for businesses that are looking for a quick and sanitary way to test employees coming back to the office. But she also said any thermometer is better than none. The key is testing before you're feeling sick so you know if your temperature is higher than normal. Oh, and last thing, if you have a glass thermometer. And the simple message is glass thermometer, get rid of it. If you've got more questions, send us an email. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. Welcome back to my house as we all continue to get through this together. And even though this is day 50 of the COVID siege, our Kansans are still finding ways to honor our everyday heroes. Tonight at CHI St. Vincent Infirmary in Little Rock, the Pulaski County Sheriff's Department joined dozens of other first responders in a light show for healthcare workers fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. Around 70 emergency vehicles paraded around the hospital, lights flashing. Pulaski County Sheriff Eric Higgins says it never hurts to tell people you appreciate them. I'm taking them for granted. We know that, that they're here serving, doing, doing this day in and day out. And it's just so important. We, we take the time just to tell them thank you, just let them know uh, that we care. And, and it's, it's important for people to hear that. Sheriff Higgins says the light show was not only for doctors and nurses, but the unsung heroes like cleaning crews and administrative staff. There are so many versions of heroes nowadays. Big rig truckers are even heroes in a pandemic, carrying essential supplies across the country. The Arkansas Trucking Association, RDOT, and State Highway Police joined together today to distribute face masks and hand sanitizer to truck drivers traveling through the area. Truckers seem very appreciative. Uh, many of them already have masks. Even if they haven't, they're still so appreciative of our officers around here doing this, providing this service. This is all part of a larger highway police effort to give out 100,000 masks to truck drivers across the state. And a reminder, you can make your own mask at home without having to sew, staple, tape with the Craig O'Neill Face Mask Academy, now showing on THB11.com. I'll show you how to take an old t-shirt, scissors, a, uh, a uh, marks a lot, a Sharpie, I should say, a ruler, shoelaces, and it can be done in eight easy kid-free lessons. Why, you'll make your own and be so proud and everyone say, go to THB11.com. We'll be right back. <laughs>